So Team C's mission is to raise 30 million dollars and remove 30 million pounds of plastic from the world's oceans, beaches and rivers. Every single dollar raised is a pound of plastic from the ocean. Stay tuned to the end of this video and see how you can get involved. So if you're a fan of the channel, you'll know that I like to dabble in creating my own little bike products. They've been so well received, I get messages every day from people asking where they can buy these products, which is, which is super cool, but I just haven't been able to bring myself to produce a new product, mainly because I'm worried about the wastage. So I don't wanna make a product for the, just the sake of making a product. Light bulb kinda hit the other day when I realized that there is no recycling scheme for soft plastics in my town, and it's such an opportunity for me to go out there and make something with waste. This is the soft plastic that my family accumulated just in one week. It's uh, pretty crazy to think that all of this would just end up in landfill and in some places into our rivers and eventually into the sea. So for this Team C's video, what better way to merge those two thoughts and come up with a way to actually make usable product from waste plastic. Mud Gods is obviously a good solid start and in this video I'm going to show you the whole process of how you can do this yourself, how you can take rudimentary tools and a pile of plastic and turn them into sheets to make whatever you want but in our case it's going to be a Mud God. I'm also going to take it to the next level and talk a little bit about how I'm thinking of turning this into an actual sellable product. So that's speeding up the production with CNC's or using big presses, but also adding stuff like branding and, and, and that. So as you may have guessed, there's millions of different types of plastics. There's PPs, LDPEs, nylons, laminates. There's combinations of all of these. It's ridiculous. I will link some stuff down below to help you realize what plastic you're dealing with. There's a few really good resources that I'll link down below. What's nice about the process that I developed is it doesn't really matter. Most soft plastics will in some way, if you get them hot enough, fuse together. But for best results, you're gonna wanna use all the same kind of plastic. So in this example that I'm showing you, I used LDPE or low density polyethylene. It's the number four on the recycled plastic thing. This is just bubble wrap and some postage packaging. Once you've sorted your plastics out and you've got the bits that you wanna use, you start by cutting everything up into nice small little pieces. The smaller the better, and if you want that kind of real cool marbly effect, you wanna add a few different complementing colors to the mix. The next step is to start fusing everything into a sheet. What I like to do is lay out two sheets of baking paper with some plastic in between and hit that with a really, really hot iron. What you're trying to do is just fuse everything into one layer so it's a bit more workable. Once you've got it into one semi-solid layer, what I like to do is alternate between using the heat gun and then giving it heaps of pressure with a hot iron. This starts to really melt and fuse those layers together. It does work and you can get a good product out of this, but it does take a lot of time. What I decided to do to get a bit more consistency and to speed the whole process up is I actually went and built myself a press. Now, to be honest, it's, it's way easier than you think it would be. I stole a jacket out of the car, I knocked up some timber backing plates paired with a couple of baking trays, and then all I did was weld up a very simple steel frame out of some scrap 50 by 50 box section. Oh, and uh, give it a good paint job, of course, because, you know, that, that matters. <laughs> uh, with the press, the plan of attack here is to heat, press, heat, press, heat the sheet with a heat gun until it melts right the way through, and then apply a whole lot of pressure. You can use a heat gun or an oven if you can get the oven hot enough. This will start to consolidate all those layers into one, force the air out, starting to melt all the plastic together. If you have a few gaps, what I like to do is actually just trim the real skinny bits along the edges that I'm not going to need and then fill those gaps with some heat and pressure. You can repeat this process over and over again. The more you repeat it, the better the lamination and that cool marbling effect is going to be. So once you have your sheet, there's many different options you can go with. If we're just talking mud guards, you could just eyeball it with a pair of scissors and you should be all good. Uh, you could also take two seconds and Google DIY mud guard templates and you'll get about a million of them. I'll leave the two that I made up down below 
just below that donate button. Feel free to use those as you see fit. LDPE cuts really nicely with some sharp scissors or even a craft knife. You can just as easily drill those holes out with a 5mm drill bit and it works perfectly. Once you're happy with that, you're honestly only a couple of cable ties away from your brand new mudguard. But as I said earlier, goal for this video is to achieve something a little bit more refined like a final product. Once I'd, once I'd got the process of making the sheet down pad, I cracked out the CNC and tried a couple things. The, the repeatability with the CNC is just awesome for you know cutting out the shape and drilling the holes. But I wanted to use it for something a little different, i.e. branding. I tried a couple different things and, and you know, you let me know which one you prefer down below in the comments. So I thought a CNC-able piece of the Team C's logo would be a good place to play with and uh, make a good first test. I CNC'd out the logo so it had a little indent. I then masked everything on top of the mudguard and uh, hit it with a little bit of black spray paint just to make that logo really pop. I think this one came out really nicely. The second one, which I'm, I'm actually pretty proud of, I made a little aluminium Team C's puck, let's call it, and then I heat pressed that into the mudguard. This came out super well. It has pretty easy repeatability. This could be the winner, but I'll see what you think. Let me know down below. I'm, I'm so, so stoked with these. So I'm, I'm really excited with how this project's turning out. I, I can't wait to see where it goes. If you want one of the mudguards that you've seen in this video, they're all gonna be for auction down below. Every single cent of that is gonna go to the Team C's fund. If uh, for some reason you can't be part of that, which most people won't be because it's mostly just New Zealand, if you can't be part of that and you still want to get involved, there's donate buttons all around and there's also heaps of uh, information in the description down below. I'm also planning on taking this project further. It's something I'm quite passionate about and I can't wait to share the whole process with you. Look for the next video in this series where I turn this idea into an actual sellable product that you're going to be able to buy. So. Have a look down below. Here's a link. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Okay, should we play? Every heads I get out of five, I'm donating 10 bucks to Team C's. You ready? One. Oh, two. <laughs> three. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's only three. Three out of four. Ain't bad. Four. 40 bucks, that's my donation. You do the same. See you later.